At our last lesson, we discussed how the instruments look in the score. What we didn't talk about is how they sound and how the conductor reads that score. How do you translate it into the actual sound? I thought that this time we would actually look at how this is done in a very basic, simple way. Probably most of you have seen a single line. It could be a violin part, it could be a song. You've probably seen that in your life. And for the most part, it's going to be in what we call the treble clef, which is somewhere in, in that range. It looks a little bit like a key with a strange knot on the bottom. Usually very straightforward. It starts to get complicated when you get to the piano or the organ and you have to read two different clefs at the same time. Here's eight bars of a very short piece by the Brazilian composer Oscar Fernandes. So I'm looking at two different things. In the right hand, I'm playing in the treble clef. And in the left hand, I'm playing in the bass clef. It's a little bit like this, isn't it? Where you have two different things going on. We don't read them the same way. You have to learn by repetition over and over. Beethoven, one of the great writers for string quartet, helps us out a little bit here because we can now see what happens when you add a third clef to the score. A string quartet is exactly what the name implies, four members of the string section. Two violins, a viola, and a cello. The violins are playing in the treble clef, the same one the right hand did on the piano before. And the cello is playing in the bass clef, the same one the left hand did on the piano before. It's that other instrument, the viola, who's kind of the troublemaker. The viola is sitting on the third line with a whole other clef altogether called the alto clef. So now we have three different clefs to learn. Each one has their own language and their own sound. Each member of the quartet has his or her own line separately. Usually a quartet member will have a copy of the score, or the four lines, but each one has had to learn how to play it individually, to listen to what the other members do, whether they're playing at the same time or playing separately, and to understand the clefs, the different notes. So let's just look at that first bar. In the first bar, the first violin has to play two notes. This is called a double stop. So the first violin is playing. And the second violin, just playing one note, the bottom note on the instrument, a G. The cello, also like the first violin, playing two notes. So if we just had the violins, we would have this with the cello. So something is missing. It's that middle voice, the viola, which plays these two notes. And when we add that, we have a much fuller and richer sound. Again, though, we have to learn to read those clefs. The treble clef is sometimes called the G clef. The bass clef is sometimes called the F clef. 
The viola plays in the alto clef, also known as the C clef. And the cello sometimes has to kind of sneak around three different clefs, the bass and the treble, plus something that looks like the alto clef called the tenor clef jumps up. All this is very complicated. But if you're a conductor, you must learn all these transpositions, a critical word in the conductorial arsenal. The good news is that these clefts in the strings are usually imitated somewhere else in the orchestra. Igor Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is a great example. It starts with the bassoon, playing a very high register, so high that the composer simply couldn't write it in the bass clef. It would go way off the page. So he chose to do this in that same tenor clef I told you about for the cellos. It's very high. Not so easy for the bassoonist either. But we know that clef from our study of Beethoven quartets and the use of the tenor clef. What does it all really look like when we have a lot of instruments going on? What a mess. Everybody's doing something. It kind of looks haywire. Some woodwinds are playing trills. Some of the brass are playing long notes. The strings are chugging away with all kinds of stuff going on. I couldn't even begin to translate this into the piano. I wouldn't want to. But I can look on the page, and that thickness of the texture tells me what it's going to sound like. I can see how the brass are separated in their notes from the other instruments that are playing. I can see that the strings, the low ones, are chugging away with the low woodwinds. All these things are going on at the same time. Meanwhile, we have these different clefts going on, and we have keys. For instance, the clarinets play on their instruments, which are in B flat. When the clarinet sees on their page what we think in the treble clef looks like this, they actually are playing that. A C is transposed down, a whole tone. We have to learn to read that, because that's what the clarinets have in front of them. When the E flat, the high clarinet, sees that note here, that instrument is actually playing that, the E flat clarinet. When the horn sees a C natural, they're actually playing that in F. Pretty complicated. I won't even get into what the percussion have. So often, they don't have pitches. And we have to be able to determine what it's going to sound like. What will that real sonority be? This part is, for many conductors, the hardest. And in some cases, not all the conductors can read the scores. It was rumored, probably correctly, that the great conductor of the Boston Symphony, Serge Kusevitsky, would bring in two pianists to play through the scores for him so he could hear what they sounded like for addressing what the instruments had. There are also great musicians who've been unable to read music, classical ones, some opera singers. They just do it by instinct. They hear it once, or have somebody play it to them, and they know what to do. Yes, translating the score, understanding the clefts, how they work with each other, is indeed the most difficult part of our task. But just like when you learned to read a book, once you have it down, you never forget it. You look at the notes. You look at the instruments that are playing. You begin to understand what they all sound like, both together and separate. This is part of the craft 
of being a conductor. Not so much the art part, the real nuts and bolts, understanding the language, knowing the clefs. You know that famous song in The Sound of Music, Do, a do, a female deer. That was all about learning the notes, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Not invaluable, a very good way to understand how the notes work, and a very good way to actually learn the clefs. So your assignment this week is to go and look through any scores or piece of music you can, read up on how to transpose the different clefs, and see if just by looking at the page, if you can hear what the music sounds like. We'll see you next time. Thank you.